دفناه على عجال فصف زحفنا مشينا لثلاثة أيام مشينا Apa yang lebih Islam? Percuma KTP Islam, kelakuan komunis, makan duit. Saya akan melanjutkan perjuangan lawan dan kawan-kawannya, terutama gerakan mahasiswa tahun 98. After the 10th year, um, we thought that we should have a change. So um, this year, uh, we had a kind of a regional focus. We had a lot of films from Southeast Asia region, and uh, we kind of concentrated on the theme of democracy and good governance. Uh, we thought that um, because the film festival initiative was very Malaysian, we talked about Malaysian issues. We not kind of concentrated on that aspect. But um, after ten years, and after what we experienced in Malaysia. Uh, recently, with the election and people power and trying to change, I think to a certain extent, um, we're kind of like running out of ideas, you know, in terms of how else can we bring about change in Malaysia. And I think um, we have a lot to learn from our neighbors, you know, activists and uh, you know people in Thailand, in Indonesia, in Philippines. So I thought it was um, good that um, films would be a good medium to start. Sharing, people to people sharing, yeah. Jadi Baptis menjadi kakak. Kami sudah menikah hampir tiga tahun. Istri gua Muslim sampai sekarang. Ku senang kok temenan sama mereka. Mereka nggak rempong orangnya. Jadi enak diajak bercanda dan apa? Jadi double perasaan lah. Ini antara ganjang Cina sama ganjang bertua. Anak cikam juga. That is loyal to him and him alone. You know how many victims are in my food? In total, about 50 films over nine days. Yeah, and um, countries, I have a uh, film from almost all countries in Southeast Asia, except Laos, Philippines and Brunei. Okay, um, but apart from that, I also had uh, several um, international films, like feature films, like uh, Marcus Vettel's films from Germany. Uh, I, we also had the Malaysian premiere of The Act of Killing by Joseph Oppenheimer. And apart from that, uh, several other films that uh, suited the topic, uh, suited the uh, Malaysian uh, situation. There was a film, there's a film on Jordan, about women in Jordan, like citizen journalists in Jordan, women citizen journalists. And uh, we're Screening that at a women team uh, screening, yeah. Okay. So this year um, we have four categories uh, for prizes and awards. Um, the main one would be the best Southeast, Southeast Asian human rights film, yeah. And uh, for that, our judge, our judges uh, are Marcus Wetter from Germany. We also have um, Michelle Giles McDonald. She is the head of UNDP in Malaysia now. And also, um, Mr. Gerald Joseph, he is a board member of Comas. So these three panel of judges, they judge about six films from Southeast Asia region uh, for this award of um, best Southeast Asian film, human rights film. But apart from that, um, there were so many good films and so many people we needed to like kind of recognize. And uh, so we created some jury prizes, one being um, best Malaysian film. And there was also um, an equality award this was this was more for films that um, concentrated on like human dignity uh, and other issues that were not so much to do with politics or democracy, yeah. And it's a really interesting category and selection of films that we received. And apart from that, um, we have one for long form documentary. Uh, although the competition just asked for films under sixty minutes because we thought that Malaysians cannot watch too long documentaries, you know? Like, you know? Uh, no, like this, I mean, the culture of documentaries is still being kind of uh, inculcated now. Yeah, but we received quite a few long-form documentaries. Saya bekerja sebagai wartawan di Metro TV. Saya 
Indonesia Luviana dan tim liputan Metro TV melaporkan. Ketika saya memperjuangkan teman-teman, memperjuangkan kesejahteraan teman-teman, memperjuangkan soal perekonomian kawan-kawan di Metro TV, juga tiba saya disuruh mundur. Kamu mau bekerja betul di Metro TV? Gimana Mbak Lupiana bisa jawab? Ini kalau perusahaan bilang mencemarkan nama baik. Artinya bahwa memang sudah ingin melakukan reformasi Kalau manajemen. saya nggak boleh ngomong sama siapa-siapa, ini mau bunuh Mbak Besan berekspresi. Besok kalian jadi PLK. Belok teman kalian jadi pecah. Kita tahu setiap hari Metro TV selalu memprokak, merendahkan, dan memproduksi kampanye-kampanye yang dilakukan oleh Surya Palah dan partainya Partai Nasdem. Gak apa-apa kalau Anda berbicara tentang dogma hukum, tetapi kita berbicara tentang manusia. Lastly, it's um, we also had a section for short films. Uh, yeah, which we first time we're awarding something to short films. Yeah, okay. I think uh, main thing was um, having some kind of social human rights uh, context, which um, I felt would also have some kind of um, resonance with the uh, Malaysian audience. I mean, I wouldn't say we're one of the big or main or uh, kind of mainstream ones. Uh, we've started as an underground, uh, very non-mainstream festival. And I think although it's gotten bigger and more popular and more people know us, uh, I think we've always had this um, niche and priority to screen films that will not be screened elsewhere, to give uh, opportunity to filmmakers who are doing very important things Maybe not the most beautiful film, but really good content, nevertheless. Um, yeah, that's our niche. You know, so you can expect to watch um, films you won't see on mainstream, or even at big festivals at our festival. We kind of uh, did it differently this year. Uh, we had like um, we worked with different NGOs or, and different groups, say like um, child rights, uh, women's groups, and uh, what else did we have? Um, several different NGOs to um, screen films to their target audience. So it's kind of like wider this year. But for me, um, apart from filmmakers, I feel uh, I want to reach young people who um, want to see more films about their country and about issues that they should, they care about that, and they can't find information about in the mainstream. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got one more actually target audience which I tried very hard to um, engage with. I think it's also um, our politicians and people in government. I mean, as in the issues of good governance, you know, um, and the issues of like um, how to bring about real change in Southeast Asia. Um, I think we need to also engage with them in a sense that we need to dialogue, you know, what do people want and what's on their minds actually, you know? You know, we've elected them to power, we have new governments, but sometimes 
the change are coming a bit slowly, you know. So this year we had like two regional forums where um, this Saturday, this week, uh, we have this forum called um, People Power and Real Change. And um, Zairil Kir Jahwari, which is a politician, um, is on that panel together with other people. And we want to just engage them, lah, see what, how do they see it happening, what is on their mind. And how do people, on the other hand, who's on the other side of the fence, also feel about it? Yeah, I think it's an important topic. There needs to be more engagement between uh, people in power, the government, regardless of party, and the people. Even though we're a film festival, but uh, we're very much uh, about creating avenues where um, Malaysians can then talk about issues of human rights, democracy, good governance. Yeah. One of the big issues that I think um, screening a film in Malaysia, I mean, I mean, it becomes a bit problematic is because of our censorship act, film censorship act, which uh, blanketly states that any f moving picture screened to a public audience, which then public is not so defined, has to go through the censorship process, and you need to have a certificate of censorship. Yeah. And uh, here, censorship doesn't mean just going through the process and then having your films rated as 15 or 18 or 21 or general. Uh, it's a more, um, a more, what you call it, it's a more complicated process. Uh, our guidelines are a lot more strict. We have political considerations, religious considerations, uh, racial considerations, security of the country considerations, and so, I think any film selected for the Freedom Film Fest would not pass censorship without being cut. But generally, <clears throat> we do screen to um, small audiences, we are not mainstream. So there is no reason why if the audiences are targeted and it's to uh, you know, less than 100 people, that we should go through the whole process of being, you know, cut and whatever, in, this, in the end it's just about human rights and awareness and building education that is good for Malaysia. So why, you know, apart from not having money and <laughs> everything else, we have to go through this whole process. I mean, in a way it really impedes uh, freedom of uh, information and awareness because if you start to impose stuff on people like us, we're going to give up on trying to screen films in the end. Yeah, you know? and. Where else would Malaysians get to screen films like this, you know, see films like this and have discussions and platform to discuss with Southeast Asian filmmakers or activists why they make such a film, what's happening in their country. It's through passion mostly because we believe in it and um, despite the festival being very small, but I know that and I know many people, um, once they come to the festival, they get hooked and they know what we're all about and they believe in it and they support it. It's just now the challenge of like what Marcus said just now, getting someone to come, you know? And that's where I think we're still weak at publicity and uh, attracting the audience that we really need to attract. And that's where I think um, we need everybody's help, you know, at tweeting, at, you know, Facebooking, at sharing it with your friends and telling them to come. Just, okay, you have been, but just bring along a friend and, um, yeah, it will change your perspective, I, I guarantee it. I think Malaysia is not lacking in good content, critical people or talented filmmakers, but um, it's a really hard um, industry to survive in. There, you know, there's no support for documentary financially, uh, very little for training and also kind of peer support, you know. Everybody wants to be a feature film director, short film director, you know. But um, to make films that matter on not popular or commercial subjects, uh, I think you take it takes passion. It takes passion, it takes diligence. But um, yeah, I mean, I think it's growing. And I think with uh, people like uh, having, bringing down people like Marcus for, you know, masterclass, and featuring and showcasing a lot of good documentaries not made in Malaysia, 
but uh, documentaries to aspire to, I think in the long run, it the the industry will will uh, kind of um, increase. I mean, it'll be better in the long run. Yeah, I think with documentaries, um, I think you have to start with passion uh, on a topic or a profile that you're really interested in, and then you also need to hone your film skills. You know, to be able to make a really impactful documentary. And once you see your film making so much of impact on the audience and also on maybe the lives of the profiles and people like them, uh, you get hooked. The funding wise, um, we have very minimal funding for prizes and um, for some logistical matters, uh, but we rely a lot on maybe some minimal donation which we are charging this year uh, to just uh, get things like logistics covered you know and uh, you know inviting filmmakers here um, so it's I think festivals needs to be supported by their audience you know we can go on getting money from the government or funding from everywhere else but why if the audience is not putting in five ten dollars or twenty dollars to watch a documentary, then sometimes I don't see the reason for the festival to exist. I'm starting to think like that, seriously. The audiences need to support us. If you don't do that, we have to close, you know? And it's a sign of times. If, say, for example, our audience is getting less, they refuse to pay, then we need to close. There's no demand for it. <laughs> oh, I mean, seriously, for me, the films this year is great. Are great. I love all of them. This one's like, yeah, I just wish more people watch them. But in terms of like, I think like previous years, we had more support because we screened Malaysian films. Films that were made for the festival and with um, topics that were kind of like edgy and you, they were hot topics in Malaysia. So, I saw more Malaysians coming out and more excited about the films. But this year, I did more like um, films that were related to Malaysia, but hoping that, um, like say maybe you bring a Burmese film and a Burmese filmmaker, and he shares about what happened in his country, which is quite similar to Malaysia. So I'm, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm trying to encourage regional sharing, but I think needs to warm up, needs to warm up. People need to see, oh, it's not just about Burma, it's also about Malaysia. It's about things that happen in both countries. You know, we can share strategies, we can learn from one another. So that needs to catch on. It hasn't yet. But I think um, I have one more weekend to go, this Saturday and Sunday, uh, working very hard at publicity. Uh, I think stuff, if this goes out, will help. Yeah, and I, I think it will catch on. It's important, and I hope people see the relevance. Be had a man who be a cinema genie. Come on, had. Today, you have to control the cinema genie. Im Sommer 2007 reise ich zum ersten Mal in die palästinensische Stadt Jenin. In Palästina gab es viele moderne Kinos. Die Menschen standen Schlange, um Filme zu sehen. Frauen trugen Miniröcke statt Kopftücher. Wir stellen uns vor, wie es wäre, wenn in Jenin wieder Filme gezeigt würden. Wir haben einen gemeinsamen Traum. So, do you think they help the cinema Jenin? I don't think so. So, we try. We try. It's better to try, yes. Yes. Yeah. We have this cinema project and we need financing for it. We give you the cinema to rebuild it. It's a dangerous place, you know? Do you think there would be any groups who would oppose opening a cinema? I think yes. And the law in Palestine is different from Europe. Even if this Gaza thing is happening, why this project is even more important. Turn the cinema into a tool of resistance. Or just to make a good cinema. 3D Avatar. <laughs> exactly. 
Das Flüchtlingslager werden wir nachher sehen. Normalerweise kann man gar nicht unterscheiden, was das Flüchtlingslager ist und was Janine ist. It's magical. What do you know? You know the power of the screen. Ah. Roger Waters. Tell him Ali. Yeah. I'm here to offer my moral and fiscal support. We need people who are coming to put Israeli hands with Palestinian hands together. Fassbinder is going to come. We can have a lecture in the yeah. cinema. Maybe Vin Vendors can come. Fassbinder no, no, is dead.